Israel's missile defense systems are stretched to the max, pushing the limits of the famous multi-tiered design and allowing first-time operations achievements courtesy of the Houthi rebels in Yemen. The Aero system, a joint venture of the Israeli and US MODs, hit its mark intercepting two long-range missiles outside the Earth's atmosphere. I met the CEO of Israel's Aerospace Industries, Mr. Boaz Levy, to hear more about the system and other advancements on the technological battlefield put to use these days. Here is our interview. Boaz Levy, CEO of II, thank you so much for joining us in those uh, very complicated times in Israel. Thank you. Compli complicated time indeed. So let's speak about II's involvement in that war that we're facing in the last five weeks. AI is highly involved in, in this war since uh, Saturday, uh, October 7th. Starting this morning, uh, we were called to uh, our uh, facility here in order to support uh, IDF and all the Israeli requirements. So we are there for uh, space activities, all air activities, land base, and of course sea. Our products are everywhere and uh, we are trying to manufacture as much as possible to support our forces. Your forces and your overseas clients because you have quite a few contracts, open contracts around the world. Definitely. We give full support for IDF as well as for all of our customers all overseas in the world. And uh, our customers overseas requires the supply and deliveries on time, and that's what we're doing. So we'll touch that in, in a second, but let's try to drill down about all the headlines that you've given, starting with this, uh, um, that some of them have been used for the first time operative, or in um, operative use. Definitely. Uh, we're speaking about the Aero weapon system, and actually two versions of that, Aero 2 and Aero 3 and both of them were uh, successfully demonstrated an uh, um, interception, interception of an incoming ballistic missile. So let's divide it into two. The first operative uh, 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 success was of Aero 2. Tell us about the threat that arrived at Israel, the threatened Israel, and the interception. We are speaking about uh, long-range uh, ballistic uh, missile that was probably launched from uh, Yemen, north of Yemen, toward uh, Israel. Uh, it's a long range, as I mentioned, means hundreds of kilometers with a big warhead. And uh, the aero weapon system was there to, uh, to acquire the threat and then to launch the interceptor toward the impact point of the threat, acquire it by its own sensor, and by then, during the homing phase until the killing of the warhead of that uh, threat. And uh, that's what we did. One uh, time with Aero 2 and the other time uh, is with the uh, Aero 3, which uh, uh, its interception envelope is higher than that. And the interception was deep in space. And the threat uh, in that uh, 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 case was what? Coming from outer space? The threat was uh, a Yemen uh, rocket, but uh, we know its origin, its origin is Iran, and uh, we intercepted a Shihab tree-like uh, target. And explain to our viewers why the differences once using an arrow 2 and then an arrow 3. There is a difference in the altitude of those two interceptors. One of them is aimed to intercept the threat, uh, in, in the atmosphere and outside the atmosphere, while the other one, Aero 3, is uh, aimed to, to intercept the incoming ballistic missile in a higher altitude. The combination of both of them can give you a better uh, solution for the threat, and we can actually intercept it more than one time. You've been testing both in quite a few tests, but it's not the same. And once it happened, Tell me of your assessment of, of, of what the missiles have been doing, uh, 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 the achievements. First, I think that we should uh, acknowledge the fact that uh, it was operated by Israeli Air Force 
um, soldiers and uh, they did a wonderful job intercepting it, controlling the mission. So nowadays we can uh, we can uh, rely on them and know that, that it is a, a successful interception to uh, their uh, kind of work. Uh, we uh, did many tests along the years for Area 2 and Area 3, but we never faced the real one. And uh, I think that uh, facing the real one these days can give us uh, the confidence level we required in order to uh, face the future type of threats. You know, I bet some of your clients watched um, closely uh, of those interceptions. Many, for example, the Germans who just signed a, a month ago or so a huge deal regarding such systems and now you can come with a full proof. It works. It works, but it works in many other uh, tests that we did along the years. And I think that uh, Israel and Germany and the United States can count on the system that is proven one. Today it's a battle proven as well, but it was proved through a lot of tests. And uh, what we can say that after this uh, interception, the confidence level increased dramatically. But it's still a proven system. You know, I read some, a little bit of the, of the professional media uh, uh, dealing with those interceptions and they were all amazed by the, the performance of those systems because at the end of the day, a hard kill, you know, weapon to weapon, hitting that out of space, okay, it worked during tests over and over again, but doing it practically, in real time, with a, a, a live threat coming at you, it's a big wow. You're absolutely right. Many years ago, it was declared by the question, can you hit a bullet with a bullet? And I think that we proved it. Because at the end of the, the day, such a uh, missile, long-range missile, is the bullet in space that fly in a very, very uh, high, alti uh, high altitude and high velocity. And uh, in order to inter intercept it, we need to face the bullet to the bullet actual hit and that's what we did. I want to touch with you other fields that you've mentioned of your involvement in that war. Let's speak about space. Um, obviously, you know, we see satellite pictures, we see, we understand that uh, we watch closely what's going on and Israel is deeply involved in, in, in an actual war in Gaza, but in a practical war in the north as well and is being uh, targeted from Yemen and might be targeted from Iraq and Syria and Iran, which means we need a huge cover, an actual one. It's not a game, it's a war. It's a war and our product is out there uh, as, as for any other operation that they are doing. And speaking of uh, space, we have uh, two types of satellites, observation satellite and communication satellites. In such a complicated world, both of them are working uh, properly as we expected and give the decision makers in Israel the right picture in our area. The observation satellite is giving the picture here in Israel, in Gaza Strip, in the north and actually in any place that we want to observe. And the communication satellite gives us the capability to connect between forces. And a combination with, uh, between two of them is very strong. From the other hand, we have UAVs. And if you have observation satellite and UAVs, you can control the area in much more uh, better way. You know, a few years ago there was a dispute in Israel. Should Israel have its uh, independence in space? Should Israel invest because it's very expensive? Or can it buy, you know, the, the, the resources from foreign entities, etc.? I think that debate has been uh, closed before that war, but now you give the hard proof that we actually need to be dependent on ourselves and only on ourselves. I believe that um, this debate uh, was proved many, many years ago and uh, there was a decision to have this capability in Israel. Going into space, it's a huge decision made by our leaders, and nowadays we have the capability, as I mentioned, to observe the, the, the area that we would like to, to see from space with uh, two types of satellites. 
One of them is, has an RF capability, the other one has an optic capability. And again, the combination between RF to optic uh, uh, capabilities coming from space gives you a dramatic picture that you can analyze and give your, the solution to your decision makers in the government or at the uh, IDF. Without getting into details, uh, uh, which will assist others, but looking at pictures probably you've seen coming from satellites, the gas strip before October 7th and currently, how does it look? I think uh, you can uh, see the same pictures, the TV every day, you can see them from other sources, and it looks different. And uh, the picture coming nowadays, it's not the same as it was in October 6th. Let's talk about UAVs and your involvement. You know that field very well, but I don't want to ask you about your products and about the IDF. I want to ask you, as an expert, to assess the enemy. We see the weapons that are coming from Yemen, for example, that some of them you need to intercept yourself or other systems. And you see uh, uh, systems that are being used from Lebanon in different types and, and, and measures by Hezbollah, by Hamas and by others. Assess those threats and the, uh, and the answers that Israel gives to them. Well, some of them are UAVs, as you mentioned, but some of them are cruise missiles and uh, the other one are very short uh, range type of uh, drones. loitering or drones and, and others. So it's a huge variety of, uh, of systems in which we need to, to find them and to, give, uh, to allocate them and to give the right solution to them. So the, the major issue here is to allocate them and to observe them. And you are doing it by various types of uh, capabilities that we have here in Israel. You can use radars, you can use haptics and other capabilities in order to create the right picture. Once you see them and track them, it's much more easy to intercept them. One thing that has changed, but you've detected it before the war, but we, now everyone sees it, 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 it's the flow, the variety of, of, of cruise missiles or UAVs and other methods that the Iranians have poured into that area and we see them coming from Yemen, from Iraq, from Syria, from Lebanon, even in Gaza, not by the Iranians, but their own build, but still we see such uh, 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 small uh, aerial sources dropping uh, uh, mortar shells, dropping uh, uh, the other devices on the troops on the ground. It became the thing in that war. Yes, and I think that the solution for that is a robust system. And we are speaking about system of system capabilities with very robust uh, capability. Means that we can uh, work in different layers but in different observation areas as well. And uh, the answer today is uh, controlled by uh, very sophisticated systems that can watch uh, the threats coming from north part, west part, east part, and, and all the other uh, south parts as well. So that's what we are doing, and we can divide interceptions between all of those layers uh, while, the, again, the heart of that is uh, the Israeli Air Force. I want to ask you about one, one more local thing before I touch with you, the international thing, and that is the Barak 8 system, uh, uh, your system, which hasn't been used yet. Uh, we hope it won't because that means a huge scale war with the Northern Front. But a word regarding that and, and, and the readiness of the system, the system is being used in the Israeli uh, Navy uh, due to the fact that uh, in Israel uh, the, the area and the defended area require the, this type of capabilities and we are working with combination with all the other systems. So it's there, the, the SAR 6, 5 and 6 are there and uh, we, are, we are ready for any type of threat but again the ones that control the system is IDF with accordance to its own uh, capabilities and requirements. One last thing uh, was, uh, you've mentioned at the beginning of, of, of our conversation, the international market. Uh, you know, we're in a war, so obviously the IDF sits here and demand more and more, but still you have open contracts and you need to supply to your clients. How do you do both? 
in a situation of war? We are working with the close cooperation with Ministry of Defense. They are controlling the situation and we have our requirement as well as for Israel requirement. And I think that we know how to do the right combination. As I said in the beginning, we started to work at the very same day that uh, the operation started. And uh, we are working three shifts a day in order to, uh, to deliver those types of deliveries to all of our customers in Israel and outside of Israel. I think that the combination of uh, giving our capabilities in order to support IDF is going on the same way as we are delivering our, our uh, customer worldwide our products. Boaz Levy, CEO of I, I thank you so much Thank for you. speaking to us. Thank you. Thanks.